All right, good morning, everyone. And um, I know some of you are already anticipating that I'm going to be talking about speaking in tongues because that was mentioned during the training. But, you know, um, um, last night I felt that, uh, I mean, this morning particularly, I felt like, you know, it needs a better treatment in order for me to really explain, you know, I'm speaking in tongues well. So we're going like to delay that for next week. All right, so dun sa mga mag, na, nasa bakasyon next week, uh, the top online. So uh, so we can actually like uh, talk more about that and ng mas maayos siya. All right, so um, so today, so today I was like praying kanina pang madaling araw, right? And then, uh, and of course, uh, the hullabaloo of, uh, of uh, we every time that we gather here, um, uh, we need to leave the, we need to leave the house at around, you know, um, 6.30. And this morning, Right, uh, um, because we have, a, do you know, some of you might not know that the way that we bring our stuff here is that we rent a U-Haul van, right? So Saturday night, the, the band, the, the staff, and everybody who's there, we pack it and then park it in front of our building and then bring it here in the morning. And the one who was assigned to uh, drive kanina, Jomar, but amazingly, ang hirap ng Uber kanina umaga. I guess you know Uber drivers like titipid ng gasolina. <laughs> yeah, because the yeah, gasoline right now is just like, you know, crazy. Yeah, $83? $85? Yeah, that's the first time that we had experienced that. Yeah. So, um, and, uh, so Uber kanina umaga and Joma was coming from the city. He, he messaged me early in the morning. So I was not like really uh, ready yet. I was like dressing up. I ordered Uber and then the last minute he said that he would be able like, to get at 6.45 because it's going to take around 15 minutes from the church to here. So just imagine the, the confusion and, you know, the, the panic this morning and tell you my anxiety level was like off the charts. And then, you know, I remembered, you know, I didn't pray, right? You know, that what I did was just like think of solutions, Right? Think of solutions. I slept really late last night studying. And while we were going here, then I felt that urge that the message for, you know, the speaking tongues, number one, of course, you know, and I always listen to the Lord God. And there are times that the Lord God actually does that. So I, while I was again, so went back to the house in order to, to iron my, my clothes and to, to dress up and all that stuff. Right? <laughs> and... And, and, and when as I was like uh, going back and, uh, and then, then this morning, our pastora was not feeling well. Actually, she told me that her, numbs, uh, her hands were numb. And that actually scared me a lot. And I know that it's like, you know, it could be, you know, um, a, an impending stroke. But after a while, she became better. And I was like saying, Lord, why are these things happening? Right? And, uh, uh, you know, and it, it's big Sunday. And then, and um, you know, like nothing's like it seems like nothing is working right. And actually, Jomar got here earlier than I was. We were actually already here when we saw the van was not here. We went to Panera, right? Jomar actually texted and said, um, "Early papalago, lakas ng love, you know." <laughs> right? And uh, and and looking there, so when we prayed, there's only like uh, five of us. Michelle was not feeling well and all that, and all that hubbub. And, you know, the Lord God reminded me again because I tried to put, you know, my mind to work, my hands to work, not remembering that the first thing that we do when crisis happens is to pray. Mm. How many of you actually that you're already automatic? When something happens, you automatically pray. Now, come on, come on. That's already like your resort. How many of you were like me? Usually, I am that. Right? Something happens, automatic, I pray. Right? But I don't know what happened this morning. But how many of you are like me this morning that when something happens, you're just like, ah, ah, ano ko? what am I going to do? And you're thinking of solutions. How many of you are like that? Come on, don't be shy. All right? Yep, there you go. All right, shame on you. <laughs> shame on me too. Right? So, um, and no matter how much that we are advancing in our faith, you, we cannot reduce the power of prayer. 
and the importance of it in our lives. So today we are going to go back. We talked about persecution last week. Persecution last week. Actually, this topic is going to be next week. But then, you know, I was so convicted, so I told the Lord, Lord, yeah, let me deliver this message today. So again, tap the person beside you. Do you believe in the power of prayer? Tell them. Right? If they're too far, just wave at them. Just wave at them. There you go. Do you believe in the power of prayer? Amen. All right? So we are going to see that, that prayer works. All right? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, we come to you. Again, Lord, we pray that you're going to be with us, Lord God. Inhabit, Lord God, your word once more. And again, Lord God, inhabit the praise of your people. We pray again, Lord God, that you're going to speak to our hearts. I pray, Lord God, that we are going to, again, Lord, that our eyes are going to be open, our ears are going to be open. I pray that we are going to listen, Lord God, to your word. And not only, Lord God, as listeners, but we are going to be doers of your word too. Lord, I confess and I repent. Lord God, that there are times, Lord God, that our tendency is to reduce, Lord God, the power of prayer. And help us, Lord, to remember at the end of the message, Lord God, that we will really be confident, Lord, that when we work, we work. But when we pray, you work. And thank you, Lord God, for we know, Lord, that you are the one who had given us this opportunity and privilege to be before your throne. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right. And uh, so we are in Acts chapter 12, and it says, Now at the time, the time he wrote, the king stretched out his hand to arrest some from the church. So last week we were talking about persecution, um, being shamed, you know, for his name. Rejoicing for being shamed for his name. That was last week. And um, again, uh, that's actually like uh, also something that is uh, odd. How are you going to to rejoice when you are being persecuted, when you are suffering all that. And if you were not here last week, or if you did not listened to it yet, um, it's already on, on our, on our uh, uh, Facebook videos. You can tap on it and, and listen to it. That was really a great message delivered by Brother Dennis and uh, Brother Jonathan, right, in Ozone Park. So, no, how, so that was what happened there. Then, what did he do next? He killed James, the brother of John, right? Um, for those who are like into really deeper study. And there's a contention, contention if this is James, the brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, or James the apostle. I lean more, I lean more, right? I lean more that this is uh, because it was particularly said, James, the brother of John, right? So I lean more that this is the apostle James, right? But of course, the brother of the Lord Jesus Christ was one of the brothers of the Lord Jesus Christ was also named James. And he actually became a leader in the church too, but he didn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ while Jesus Christ was still alive. He believed in the Lord Jesus Christ maybe during the, um, after the crucifixion the rest, and the resurrection. That was the time. So, but he eventually became a leader, actually as a bishop. You know, and here, one of the James, there are like three James that we know, James the... Uh, James, the brother of J- John, right? The son of Zebedee, James the Less, the son of Alphaeus, and James, the brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? So here, I lean more that this is James. This is James who is the, the brother of John, James the Apostle. But here's the, uh, the um, what, do you know what's the Tagalog term for James? Huh? Santiago, sa iba, no? But actually, it's Jacobo. Yeah, all right. So uh, yeah, I know. Where the, how, did, how did it come? Um, supposedly Jacob, but that's actually like the 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 exact translation for that. Now, and during this time, and he was killed by the sword. It says there, and because of this, Herod he saw it please the Jews. So what did he do? He started really persecuting the church, targeting who? The leaders of the church, right? The leaders of the church. And aren't you glad, primary leaders, that this is not happening right now? Diba? If there's going to be persecution, the first one who's go- going to be hunted by, uh, by the, by the you know, military, CIA, FBI, or whoever, right? the first ones who are going to be hunted, it's me. And I'm easy to find. Right? Because I'm big. And the next one who's going to be hunted is, are the deacons. Yep. 
the the deacons, right? Like our um, our archbishop Jonathan, right? He can hide easily, right? Dennis is the same way with me, and of course next the primary leaders, and of course the cell leaders, you know, and and in all that, that's what happened here. And he thought, oh, this pleased the Jews, you know. And so what he did was, he took Peter, right? He also. God Peter, he sees Peter also, not it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison. Even though we know that in, in, in previous records that Peter and John, what, they were arrested, or some of the apostles, right? Because it was not Peter, it says the Peter and the apostles, right? But Peter was already incarcerated. We know that last week we saw that. And miraculously, he got out, right? And, um, and, when he was going to be interviewed by one of the officers, Peter was already gone. And, um, bukas ang aircon. Can we request? Na request na? Yeah. Alright, so, yeah, it's getting hot in here. But don't take off your clothes. <laughs> Please. <laughs> because you don't want me to do that too. <laughs> All right, so and and so what happened was so when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him because he escaped before. Oh man, so this time, uh, Peter, we're gonna make sure, right? We don't know what magic you did, right? Uh, we know that you did a Houdini, but this time you will not be able to do that. Four squads, can you imagine, right? So um, this could be, you know, the, the least of this. Four squads, 16 soldiers. And these are not ordinary soldiers. These are Roman soldiers. And do you know how they had trained? These guys, you know, the special forces of the, of, uh, of the Roman, Roman, Roman uh, soldiers, they, each one of them were trained to actually take out 16 Right? That's actually how, how good they are in battling. But just imagine, one of them can kill 16. 16 who can kill 16, they were guarding Peter. Huh? So they were like saying, you have no way to get out of this Peter. Huh? And then, so what happened, what happened afterwards? Intending to bring him before the people after Passover. We know that this is not Peter's time. Even though eventually Peter also died, he was killed, he was crucified upside down. Right? And he, he actually told them, he told the, the, those who were going to crucify him, I don't deserve to be, be uh, crucified like the Lord Jesus Christ. So that was his request. He was crucified upside down. But look at what happened to the church. When we hear problems, when we hear somebody got sick, when we hear that a couple is actually, you know, um, fighting. When we hear that a, a one of our children in church actually went, went away from, from their house, run away. When we, when we hear that somebody lost their job. You know, when we hear that, uh, when we hear that, when we hear that somebody is needing something. What is our resort? Look at verse 5 and read this with me. Ready? Begin. Peter was therefore kept in prison. But constant prayer. Read with me. One, ready? One, two, three, go. But constant Right? Verse 5. Is that there? It should be there. Verse 5. All right. Let's, uh, so it says there, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Right? So what, what happened? The church came together and what did they do? Pray. Pray. So this is a crisis is always a call to prayer, right? A crisis is always a call to prayer. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, it says, 
praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Yeah, I'm sorry about that because I think I, um, I put starting at verse 6. That's the one that, uh, no, I mean in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in Acts chapter 12. So we don't have verse 5. But here, look at what happens. Ephesians chapter 6, do you know, are you familiar with Ephesians chapter 6? What is this chapter about? What is Ephesians chapter 6 about? It starts with the family. Remember? Ephesians 6, 1. Right? That's the favorite verse of Rika. <laughs> All right? So you need to hear Rika's story about that. <laughs> and uh, um, it talks about relationships. And then, at verse 10, it started talking about spiritual warfare. Hmm. You know, because there's a war going on, right? Ever since, ever since, you know, ever since the fall of man, even before the fall of man, Satan tried to overtake God's throne. Kudita. Hmm, nagkudita. You know, parang, um, you know, sa Pilipinas, we are so familiar with that. You remember? Uh, Marcos was a uh, kudita. Cory was kudita. Right? Uh, Gloria Macapagalaroyo. Um, kudita, um, um, what's his name? Erap. And then, Gloria Macapagalaroyo was kudita again. And I'm praying the, really hard right now because wala pa, hindi pa nakaupo yung ating presumptive na presidente ng Pilipinas. Right? Meron ng mga nagtatry magkudita kagad. Right? But here's the thing. You know, Satan tried to overthrow God. And until now, that's what he is doing. Until now, that's what he is doing. We are in a spiritual war. Say it with me. Spiritual war. Tapikin mo yung katabi mo ulit. Sabihin mo sa kanya, Hoy Gising, may gera. Mm. Mm. Right? Yeah. Yung lalo na yung makatulog ngayon, yeah. Meron ako nakikita, walang katabi. Yung nasa likod, tapikin nyo sa, ano, sa ulo nyo tapikin. <laughs> right? We are at war. Listen up. We are at war. And we need to learn how to fight. We need to fight for our loved ones, for our relationships, for our children, for our community, for our world. And that's why the Lord God has given us, this is going to be a topic in another message. Right? The Great Commission is actually talking about world conquest. Right? So, the Lord God is telling us clearly here, and how do we fight? Of course, there's the armor of God, but listen in verse 18. The Lord God said, right, after having this all, you know, the, um, all the armor of God, and eventually talk about the shield of faith, then the sword of the Spirit, and then in verse 18, then he said, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And being watchful to this end with all, listen, Perseverance, say it with me. Perseverance. We don't stop praying. Pray without ceasing. Right? And supplication. So what's the, 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 what's the, the, the word supplication? Is like, again, that word supply is there. And what supply is not only like the material needs that we have, but everything. Who needs strength today? Right? Yeah, especially my two boys. They got into a dance last night. That, that's why they're so tired. It's hard to wake them up this morning. All right? And, you know, and in the, there was a, in the Gulf War, the second Gulf War, and then, um, again, the, the, when Iraq was, a, was attacked by the United States, they didn't send the Marines and the military, the army, right away. What did they do? They bombarded the place. It's called, this strategy was called shock and awe. Say it with me, shock and awe. Tingnan mo yung, katapid mo, yung katabi mo. Mukha yan. <laughs> yan pakita niya, paano, ano, ano yung tsura na nasyak? Come on, pakita niyo sa katabi niyo. Paano yung nasyak? Paano yung nasyak? Paano, paano? Nani Susa, paano yung nasyak? <laughs> okay, alright? But there's this part, na sinabi niya nun, and, and awe. Right? And actually in the scriptures, you know, that, that's where we got the word awesome. But here, instead, so they send, it, they send it there. Before the ground troops charge in, the bombardments were done. Airstrikes, cannons, and mortars were used. And in the olden times, they used catapults to, to break everything. And then they charge. 
This is done in order to soften the defense. And the Lord God said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Church, the Lord God has given us the power to charge the gates of hell. Right? We are there. And now, and, 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 and when that happened, and, and there are times that even during the advance when they cannot actually go through, they still have the airstrikes. That's prayer for us. That's prayer for us. And uh, during our week of fire, we discuss about that, that how prayer, worship, and everything that we do is actually used in order for us to battle well. They are weapons and even our singing, our singing, you know, our music, our singing, if it's being sung in our hearts, they are actually, the Bible says that they are actually weapons, right? To break the chains. Yeah, so when we're saying, break every chain, yeah, get in time. Break everything. 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 Right? So, and worship, praise. The Lord God says that they are, you know, the praise in our mouths. They are weapons. And so prayer, the Lord God is telling us. Right? The prayer, the call to prayer is actually to shock and awe. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 8. And look at what Paul said. I desire therefore that the men pray everywhere. Lifting holy hands without wrath and doubting. Mm-mm. Right? You remember the Lord Jesus Christ? Bakit nagalit si Jesus? Why did Jesus Christ become angry at the temple? Do you remember? Do you remember? What did he say? Those who had... Uh, that's, uh, how many of you had seen... Uh, went to Sights and Sound to watch Jesus? You know, that was like... A, for me, that was like the greatest scene there. And even though, you know, the size and sound is 5D, right? What's 5D? You actually like, a, I don't know if some of you um, notice that, that even the, the, the smell, the scent changes with the scenes, right? And there are times, you know, when they were, uh, uh, during the time, then they were like uh, on the boat and there was storm. There was actually water, right? And uh, then after a while, I noticed the scent actually, you know, it smelled like the sea during the time. But I was uh, wondering why didn't, when the, the demoniac that was delivered by the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it should have smelled like pigs, you know. <laughs> because the, 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 he cast the pigs there. Just imagine that. But going there, why did the Lord Jesus Christ again? Uh, if you haven't gone to Sights and Sound, I heard David was also, David is also great. So, right? So, um, and uh, how many of you already watch? Yeah, so those who watch are going to sponsor those who didn't watch <laughs> yet. All right. Yeah. Let's share, um, share it. All right. Now, why did the Lord Jesus Christ got angry? Remember what he said? You have turned my father's house into a den of thieves. Why? What should it be? It should be a house of prayer. But here's the thing. How many churches, church buildings right now are really house of prayers? From Monday to Saturday, nothing happens. People just come Sunday. And then on Sunday morning, right, if the worship service becomes longer than one and a half hours, people are angry. Right? Why? Especially during football season. The Lord God said that even here, today, the Lord God said, like cast, should be a house of prayer. And we might mistake that we are doing a lot of things. We, our church is active. But one of the things that we should never ever forget is that we should be a house of prayer. Hmm. And next one. 
Next one, in, after that, so Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers. Matinde. Right? And the guards before the door were keeping the prison. So he was chained, and then there were two guards in front of the gate, right? I mean, in front of the, the prison door. And now, behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him. Huh? Right? And what happened there? And a light shone in the prison and struck, <laughs> and struck Peter on the side and raised him up. Yeah? Right? And, and Peter, you know, and raised him up. And just imagine, you know, how big angels are. Diba? They are tall and, you know, just imagine if you got struck by an angel. So Peter was awakened and he said, arise quickly. And he rose up and the chains fell off. Fell off. Break every chain. Diba? Si Peter ang unang kumanta niyan. Break every chain. All right, huh? All right, so, and, and just imagine that. The, the chains fell off. Oh, man. All right, and then in verse 8, Then the angel said to him, Gear yourself and tie on your sandals. Do you know why? Because he has to run. Right? You remember? They were wearing, like, you know, um, the, their cloak. Right? It's hard to move. So we said, geared up. That's the meaning of geared up your loins. You actually be ready to fight, be ready to run. Right, so that's that's why in the Bible they say it they gird, right? That that's a, that's the point of that. Gird is like belt, you know. And uh, and during the time they don't they don't they have like long, um, you know, long cloaks. And so they lift it up and then tie it and look at what it says, right? And so he did and said to him, "Put on your garment and follow me." So he went out and followed him and did not know. That what was done by the angel was real. But thought he was seeing a vision. Alright? You know, when miracles happen, most of the time, we get surprised. We get surprised. And, and here, when Peter was like getting out, when they were past the first and second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. Can you imagine? Alright? Uh, sayang, hindi ko pa na post because I had like a... Um, I had this thing with my, I, I put that on video, that we were, where, where were we? Where's Mayumi? Uh, you know, where were we when we did that, right? So like the, the door is going to open, right? Where? Oh, in the hospital when she injured her arm, right? So before, so we, when, we, when we were going, Mai was using her, her, uh, her arm that was not injured and she was going like that. To the door, and I was like going also like the door as we walk, right? And just imagine during the time. So the first automatic door was Peter's, huh? Right? Can you imagine that? They, they, and, and we thought that it was Star Trek who invented that, who actually visualized that. No, Peter didn't even visualize that. It happened to him. He walked, and here the door got opened, and he went out, and then. And then when he, Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. You know what's going to happen to him? The same thing that happened to the Lord Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ was presented to the Jewish people. But this was not his time. And here's, here's really a principle. right? When you are doing the work of the Lord, no matter how dangerous it is, right? no matter how dangerous it is, right? obey God. Because if it's not your time, right, you will be spared. Hmm. You don't need to be, to be scared. And some of you might not know that there was a shooting in front of our building. Right? Of all places. Right? And I was like, during the time, I was like uh, thinking, we prayed for this area. We actually went around our building twice. And then a shooting happened. And do you know? But the Lord God had told us. And the next day, I was going to have um, a Zoom interview with Ives. Because there's a church that is going to partner with us, sending their high schoolers to our church. Right? And they're going to be participating in Bright Spot and in Lightcast. And that was going to be the next day. And I was like thinking, Lord, we're going to have the interview and we're going to tell them, there's a shooting in our building today. You know? And that was weird. Right? But you know, 
right? Nothing can touch you unless the Lord God allows that. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and you are obeying him, right? And am I, am, um, don't I get scared? Of course I do. But do you know that I am one of the, the, the very, very, um, very uh, memorable for me. We were in Sorsogon, in Bicol. And one of uh, the, the pastors going to preach. So I was a, a student in Bible school during this time. And there was actually a big party that was ongoing. That was ongoing. And we started setting up. We had the, and during the time, we had like the movie. We showed a movie. Uh, the title of the movie was Paglingon sa Kinabukasan, which is uh, the story of the prodigal son, which was uh, featured Ray and Fuentes. Some of you know him. And J.C. Bonin. Right? So, uh, 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 for... Those my age, uh, baguettes, all right, um, uh, during time. So we were going to, uh, so we did a film showing, and then the pastor started preaching, Pastor, pastor Jesse Aluja. And this guy, you know, um, he's a great evangelist. He was one of my teachers too, and he stood up. And while he was preaching, a guy got angry because the party got stopped. The party got stopped. It was actually like, you know, it's a town fiesta and there was a party. And then he has a bolo, a machete. And then told, the, told the, the pastor, yeah? So if you are going to, he said there, if you, are, if, you are, um, if you are really, if you are bold enough, if you're courageous, right? He said, come down here. But Pastor Jesse, Jesse actually said this. Let me finish the message. And when I am done, right, I, you can go down. And you can do whatever you want to do. But during the message, we were outside. I was like a, with some of us, we were distributing, you know, tracks and like info. And then we just learned about this commotion after. And then the police came, arrested the, arrested the guy. He was drunk and all. And so when I heard the story, so we were eating dinner. I went beside Pastor Jesse and I asked him, uh, Pastor, oh, I heard, Pastor, this is what happened. Then I asked him, you didn't get scared? And he told me, who, who told you? <laughs> He said, he got scared. He was actually thinking there. He said that after, for a while, he, the message was affected. But then he had to take out his mind out of that. Right? And I said, you know, I was really amazed. But, you know, asking him, you didn't get scared. No. Anybody would get scared during those times. Right? But we know that if the Lord holds our lives in his hands, nothing can touch you unless he allows it. Mm. Oh, tap the person beside you. The Lord God allowed that. Tell them. <laughs> you, we cannot do that. If not, right? So the next thing is, so Peter got out. Right? Peter got out. And, and, and when he got out, so he went, he remembered, he had considered this. He came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark. Right? This again, the, um, again, uh, the, during this time, you know, um, we know that the, the upper room, where the Lord Jesus Christ actually, you know, had the Lord's Supper, where they waited for the Pentecost. This is the same place. Now, they were gathered together. What were they doing? Praying. So here's the next point. Right? It is a call to team prayer. Hmm. Can I pray on my own? Can you pray on your own? Exactly. But remember what the Lord Jesus Christ had said? Where two or three are gathered in my name. There am I in the midst of them. Hmm. Right? So look at that word. They were gathered together praying. Kaya mga kapatid, wag tayong tamad. Right? Out of convenience. Pastor, pwede naman. You know, online na lang tayo magpray. Okay din yan. Right? But again, if you can look at this, the Lord God is telling us that we gather together in prayer. You know, and then, you know, we have heard the importance of being a team player, right? A team player shows up. Right? Can you imagine that you are going to, uh, right now it's a championship for, for basketball. Just imagine, um, you know, Stephen Curry says, you know, I'm just going to be with you in spirit. Can he shoot the trees in spirit? He needs to show up. Are you following this? In your cell group. Unless there's really like, you know, other reasons that they cannot come. They're sick, 
right? They're far, right? You know, you need to encourage one another to actually meet in person already. There's just something when you are meeting in person. Tell you, right? So, and why? Because when we are, you know, if, if we are doing the things that we are doing out of convenience and we're not going to do other things, or spiritual things because they are not convenient, you know, when persecution comes, right, you're not going to be able like, to bear it. Mm. But you know what? Brother Dennis last week, actually, I don't know if, of, of, if those who are in, a, in Woodside actually like, a, a caught that. He actually said that he's praying that persecution comes to the United States. You know, and, uh, and because there's just something there. But we don't have to wait for that in order for us to be a church like this, to be a cell group like this, that we come together and pray. And they're here. But it's important in church, in like us, we have our cell groups, our smaller teams. You know, and so we take teamwork to a team. We understand that. But listen, right? Much more important than team players is team prayer. Right? We pray for one another. The modern church was actually already indifferent to corporate prayer. Right? Go everywhere in the whole world except for the persecuted churches. Right? And what is the least attended activity of the church? Guess. Prayer meeting. Prayer meeting. Right? We, we look at it and it's boring. But that is the power behind what we do. So I pray some of you actually weren't able to attend our week of fire. Right? Some of you attended once. And I pray in our next week of fire by, uh, during fall that we are going to have a better attendance, a better effort from all of us. Because we are not just praying for the sake of praying. We are praying because we want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Right? Uh, do I, I heard some of you say amen. How about the others? Right? Come on. Mm. Amen. All right, and prayer meetings have the lowest attendance among you know the modern church, and we are so much into the programs that we are doing that we relegate prayer and we are not bothered by prayerlessness in the church. Are you a praying cell group? Are we a praying church? I pray that when the Lord God comes, that you will find that Lightcast is a house of prayer. Are you with me? Mm. All right, Matthew 18, 20. Again, it says there, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Individual versus community. That's why somebody asked me, Pastor, why do, why do we do corporate fasting when we can fast, you know, um, individually? You should do that too. Individual versus community. I can pray on my own. But the church had been put together by the Lord God because in church, the Lord God, there, it's, it is much more than I and the Lord. It is we, the church. Are you following this? Are you following this? There's no individual, you know, we, the church, when it comes to receiving the Lord Jesus Christ and putting our faith, that's an individual decision. But in growing and in doing the task that the Lord God has given us, the Lord God put us in a community. Mm. Right last week and this afternoon, we're going to have our training. Remember last week we told you about that? That's so clear in the scriptures. Can you grow if you don't have a, co a community? Right? Yes. You can learn from Joel Austin. Right? You can, you can actually right now, some, those who are watching him, there's like something that he says before he preaches. Right? Some people actually had memorized that. And some of you actually like learned how to smile like Joel Austin. There's a champion in you. Right? Joyce Mayer, Charles Stanley, yeah? Andy Stanley, Craig Rochelle. You know, these guys, you are going to learn. But if you are not in a community, you are not going to actually grow the way the Lord God had meant you to grow. If you are coming to church only on Sundays and you don't participate in cell groups, right? Yes, you're going, going to grow. But you, your growth is going to be stunted. Right? In Tagalog, bansot. Mm. Right? And that's why you have we seen like people, how many of you had, had actually like met Christians? And you know that they've been Christians for a long, long time, but you don't want to be with them. Tapos kamay nyo. Nakamit na kayo ng Christianong ganyan? 
Hmm? Right? Yeah. Tag nyo sa Facebook. <laughs> right? Itag nyo na yan. But here, here it is. Right? And there are times you might not know that's you. Right? So, we, the Lord God is telling us the church is we. Hmm. And we're going, and in the conclusion, I'm going to pound more on that. But here's the thing. Right? Our challenge today, because we had become so individualized. Individualized. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 42. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. The word is together. Say it with me. Together. All right. You know, here's one of the things that should be some of you. Actually, you keep yourself, the, the prayer items that you have, you keep it to yourself. Some of you, you know, there are times that I would confront you, bakit hindi niyo sinabi sa amin? And then you will tell me, Pastor, kasi nahihiya kami. Right? The reason why I am your shepherd, because the Lord God meant for me to take care of you, to be with you in your battles. You cannot win your battles alone. Right? Kahit na kasing laki ka pa ni Shaquille O'Neal, na Christiano. Even though you are a champion and when it comes to spiritual things, you're a champion in prayer, but you need somebody else. Right? That's why you're in a cell group. And somebody, actually, there was this one that actually came to me after like everything was already done and they had shambles, they cannot control anymore the situation and then they and I asked them, why didn't you talk to us? And you know what they said? Right? It is because they want to keep it to themselves first. Because they don't know what's going to be the result. My brothers and my sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't need to carry the burden alone. Mm. And in like us, I praise the Lord because we don't just pray. If there's something that we can do, we do it. A lot of you actually had given. A lot of you actually had contributed. And praise the Lord God for you. Amen? Right? But how will we know about your needs? How will, how will we fight with you when you won't even tell us what you're going through? The church, we are called to prayer together. Mm. Huh? We're talking about Peter already. Right? They could have kept this because this is shameful for the church. But no, what did they do? They came together and pray. Why? Because, the third point, because being together in prayer is a call to God's power. Say it with me. Call to God's power, right? To witness the power of God. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice because of her gladness, she did not open the gate. So she heard Peter knocking on the door, right? She ran, she ran in. She didn't open the door because she was excited, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. But they said to her, come on. Right? You, you are beside yourself. Then she kept insisting that, no, no. It's, 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 she said, so they said, no, it is his angel. You know, it is his angel. It's not really Peter. And this is really like amazing because they prayed and they won't believe that their prayers were answered. How many of you are like that sometimes? Right? And here's actually, you know, I remember, you know, a story about a church that was in contention with a bar because the bar was so near the church and people are getting drunk. You know, maybe they hate it because some of them might be you know, relieving themselves at the church property. I don't know. But the church started praying that the bar will close. Right? And finally, and finally, a lightning struck the bar and it it was gutted by fire. Totally burned to the ground. Now the owner of the bar went to the courts, sued the church, right? And blamed the church for the lightning, right? Because he can't claim insurance with that. It's, uh, you know, the act of nature or whatever. The right? acts of God is what they say. And so when the judge, uh, so the church, the, through their representative, denied that they're responsible. So the judge actually, during the arraignment, and the judge actually, you know, and he said, I find this odd. You know, I find this confusing. Here is a guy who claims to be an atheist, the bar owner, who doesn't believe in God, 
now believes that the prayer of this church was answered. Right? For him to blame. But I find it more odd, he said, that here is a church who believes in the power of God and now does not believe that they were the cause of the fire. Right? You see, the judge actually find it more odd that the people in the church do not believe that their prayers are going to be answered. That's the reason why churches don't like praying. Because a lot of people don't believe that praying together affects. Right? The Lord God tells us when we pray together, the Lord God moves. Amen? Amen. Are all prayers going to be answered by the Lord God? Not the way we want. But the Lord God always listens to our prayers and He will answer our prayers. Yes, no, um, wait, and when. Right? There are times that the Lord God is actually waiting on you. Right, Jomar? Yep. Jomar had been praying, Lord, juice me. Use me, Lord. But then he was not, but the Lord, he knows that the Lord God wants him to go to full-time ministry and his answer to the Lord Lord, bless me, bless me and Mara. That's his, that's his prayer. But then he says, but Lord, I don't want to go to the full-time ministry. Bless me, Lord, make me a millionaire. And I'll support Pastor Ron. I'll support Ives. I'll support Jake. I'll support Pastor Gasilan. And even his two sons. That was his dream. All right? And just imagine when he said yes, the Lord God started opening doors for Mara. I remember the week that he told yes, uh, Pastor, yeah. I'm going to go full-time. I remember that we had a dinner with them and Mara just like surprised us because he sa- she said she said that the Lord God had actually surprised them with something that they found. You know, they were not expecting something in their bank account. It was there. Amazing, right? And now Mara got, how many jobs you got now? 20 jobs. Hmm. Hmm. She's the head security of the, right? And, and it's amazing how the Lord God works. When you work, you work. When we pray, the Lord God works. And now, let's go again to that part. Right? And in verse 16, now Peter continued knocking. He continued knocking and when they opened the door, they saw him. Peter! Just imagine, right? And they were, look at the word. They were astonished. In in, in, in Ilocano, unbelievable. Right? This is what we miss when we don't gather together in prayer. When we relegate prayer as something that is optional. When you are, you are so excited with family camp. A lot of you are asking me, Pastor, can I leave a camp? How I wish that some of you will actually ask me, Pastor, can I leave a week of fire? Right? Yeah, kasi pastor, talagang gusto kong kumpletuhin yung week of fire. Kaya, talagang gusto kong, sana yung week of fire every month, no? Family camp, of course, eventually we're gonna have it. Right? But there's much, something that is much more important and that's being gathering in prayer to become normal for us. Hmm. And look at what happened here. Right? But motioning to them with his hand to keep silent. He declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of prison. And he said, go tell these things to James and to the brethren. When your prayers are answered, don't keep it to yourself. Post it. Right? Share it with someone. Kung gano'n ko yung active mag-share ng BBM at kakamping. Lalakas ng loob natin mag yeah, nung during time ng Trump and Biden. Right? Lahat. Tapos then now, there, if there's somebody that we need to declare, it's Jesus Christ. Amen? 
when you have answered prayers, eh, pastor, kasi mayabang dating, holy, holy. Right? You're not, uh, you're not actually like, uh, you're not campaigning about yourself. You're talking about the power of our powerful God. Amen? Amen. Don't be ashamed. Eh, don't be ashamed. I-Instagram nyo. Kung pwedeng i-TikTok, i-TikTok nyo. No, right, Nanay Susan? <laughs> ten, ten, ten. Answer prayer. <laughs> you know, and then, look at verse 18. And then, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers about what had become of Peter. Listen, church. And you, we are not only the ones who's going to get astonished, but even the people who are going against us, they are going to steer by the Lord. And some of them, just remember Paul was an enemy. He was, he was party to the, the execution of Stephen. He became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ eventually. Are you following this? One of the centurions became, uh, became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ eventually. Right? And remember, you know, and uh, Cornelius, he's a Roman centurion. He's really high in the office, but he became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. How? Because he had heard the word of God. He had heard the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. From whom? From believers, right, who were willing to risk their lives, right? Yeah? So I pray that we are going to be like these believers. I know there are times that we are. They were surprised. And let me tell you, Boring na ba yung Christian life ninyo? Hmm? Parang walang nangyayari, Pastor. So number one, I know, balik tayo, CAST. Right? How's your cell group? How's your appointment with God daily? How's your Sunday celebration? How's your training? May training tayo mamaya, alaw na. May pagkain ba tayo? We are going to pray. <laughs> right? Uh, uh, meron pong bagels, no? Hindi, joke lang. Right? And look at what the Lord Jesus Christ again had said. Right? In Mark 10, 27. The Lord Jesus Christ says, But Jesus, look at them. With man, it is impossible. But not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Right? Say it with me. With God. All things are possible. Wala naman kayong kagana-gana eh. Alright, one more time. Ready? One, two, three, go. With God, all things are possible. Do you believe that? Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Then pray together. Amen. There you go. Alright, kaya uh, pakikunan ng picture lahat nandito dito ngayon. Alright, kasi hanapin ko kayo sa week of fire. Alright. But you know, um, William Cowper actually said this, God moves in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. So when we set ourselves in prayer, we set ourselves to God's wonders. Yeah. Yeah. And by, by the way, yeah, in, in the, ano, you know, yung, you look wonderful tonight. Right? It's late in the evening. Right? But here's the thing. The reason why we are not excited anymore that we don't see, you know, the hands of God because we are not praying together. So church, let's pray together. Right? And here's another one from Alfred Tennyson. More things are wrought in prayer than this world dreams of. Praise the Lord God. And now let's, you know, you know the term mind-blowing? That's the word astonished. The church was mind-blowing. They were mind blown. I pray that like us, we are going to be mind blown. Right? That we see the, the wonders of the Lord God and we are all astonished. Um, let me, there's a uh, hymn, you know, that I grew up with. You know, some of you know this. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And look at the next lyrics of this. 
Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble everywhere? Anywhere. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still a refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find the solace there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Isn't it true? When I asked at the start, is prayer your first response or your last resort? It should not be. It's, we should not be reactive in prayer, but we should be proactive. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. We'll end with this one. And it says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or even imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church, in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. And let me take note, right, as we close, right, in this verse, number one. Did you see it says there, us? Did you see that it says there, the power in his church? Hmm. Right? And did you see it says there, immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. They were astonished. Mind blown. Right? So church, I pray that we come together. Do not belittle the power of praying together. Don't keep it to yourself. Right? We fight together. You need, we need one another to win our battles. And the first step, shock and awe. Prayer together. When we set ourselves in prayer, we set ourselves up to God's wonder, wonders. And that is our message for today. Right? Engaging acts, the power of prayer. Church, let's be a praying church, a house of prayer. People who would pray together. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for how you had, Lord, rescued, Lord God, Peter. And Lord, we know that we are in partnership with you, Lord, um, in everything that we know, Lord, that you, in your power, can do it all alone. But that's the way that you were designed, the church. Lord, that you want us, Lord God, to be together. Lord God, in the things that we do. And I pray that we are going to be more committed. Lord God, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread. Lord God, to prayer. And I pray, Lord God, Lord, and again, as we continue, Lord God, to grow in study of your word. Again, Lord, today, I pray that we are not going Lord, to be hearers only. But we are going, Lord, to be doers of your word. Lord, I pray for like us, for our cell groups, Lord God, that we, it will be, Lord God, a normal fare for all of us to be praying together. For we believe, Lord, where two or three are gathered in your name, there are in your midst. And indeed, Father, Lord, as we pray together, help us, Lord God, that our eyes are going to be open to your wonders. Lord, we come, again, for the glory of the, for the, glory of the Father. Lord, unto the glory of the Father, Lord God, in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name again we pray. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 God bless you.